1.74 million. That's the number of species on Earth that have been documented so far. However, scientists estimate that there are between 8.7 million and possibly up to 1 trillion species on our planet. Ranging from mammals to birds to insects, fish, trees, grass, fungi to single-celled bacteria. About 99% of all species that have ever existed, ever since life arose about 4 billion years ago, are extinct. That's a lot of life! Here's a question that may seem simple, but turns out to be pretty hard to answer. What is life? To define life has long been a challenge for both scientists and philosophers. And so far, no less than 123 definitions for life exist. One reason why it's so hard to define life is that it's a process rather than a substance. And it's complicated by the fact that we have no idea what life that developed outside of Earth looks like. And if it even exists. So all we have to go by is what we find all around us and ourselves. One way of defining life is that it's a property that distinguishes the living from the dead and define dead as being deprived of life. But you could argue that's a bit oversimplified. And it doesn't tell us what, for instance, mammals have in common with plants or single-celled organisms. Some biologists say you can't define life with a single one-sentence definition, but others say, sure you can. An entity is considered to be alive if it has the capacity to carry out three basic functional activities. Metabolism, self-repair, and replication. NASA likes to define life as a self-sustaining chemical system capable of Darwinian evolution. Clearly, defining life is not that easy. The next question you could ask is, what is life made of? Simply put, star stuff. Let's go back in time. And I mean all the way back. 13.8 billion years ago, to the beginning of all space and time and the universe as we know it. The Big Bang. Initially, the universe was extremely dense and extremely hot, and particles bounced around and around, until eventually things cooled down and the particles could form atoms, and then molecules, mostly hydrogen and some helium and lithium. Then everything went dark. After about 100 million years, clouds of hydrogen and other molecules started to form. These molecular clouds became bigger and bigger, and perhaps due to gravitational influence of one cloud on another, the clouds would have started to move and then spin. At some point, the pressure and temperature in the center of these enormous clouds became so massive that the hydrogen molecules fused into helium, releasing huge amounts of energy and lighting up the universe. The first stars were born. These stars were massive and short-lived and produced heavier elements, like carbon and oxygen, through nuclear fusion in their cores. As they reached the end of their life cycles, they ejected these elements out into space. And so it was now possible for new objects to form, including rocky planets, like our Earth. And the building blocks for life as we know it. Just six elements make up 99% of the mass of living cells. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, calcium, and phosphorus. These elements form biomolecules, carbohydrates or sugars. Their main functions are energy storage and providing structure. Lipids or fats, the main components of cell membranes. Proteins, responsible for many functions within organisms, including metabolic reactions, DNA replication, responding to stimuli, and molecule transport. And nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA, that contain all of the genetic information of an organism. Some scientists think that the very basic chemical ingredients for life, carbon-hydrogen molecules, may have formed relatively shortly after the Big Bang itself. And so we can finally ask the main question of this video. Where did life come from? Humans all over the world and throughout history have wondered what the origin of life is, and so countless creation myths and legends exist. But some of the earliest actual theories of the origin of life were materialist. The idea that everything that exists is matter, and life is simply a complex rearrangement of matter. The ancient Greek natural philosopher Empedocles argued that everything in the universe is made up of the four eternal elements. Earth, fire, water, and air. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Sorry, couldn't help myself. Anyway. Another ancient Greek natural philosopher, and probably the greatest philosopher of his time, Aristotle, had the idea of spontaneous generation. This theory states that some organisms come from other organisms, but other lesser beings, like bugs or frogs, spontaneously come from dead matter. 
Aristotle believed that flies come from rotting matter, mice appear out of dirty hay, and crocodiles come from rotten sunken logs. Essentially, he said that life is continuously created as a result of chance events. And this idea went pretty much unchallenged for the next 2000 years. After all, it was easy for everybody to see that some creatures just crawled out of the mud. With the invention and improvement of the microscope, scientists discovered the existence of microorganisms, as well as the hidden structures of all kinds of living things. In the 17th century, English scientist Robert Hooke was the first to write about his observations of fungi. And he coined the term cell, suggesting plant structure resembled honeycomb cells. Dutch businessman and scientist Antony van Leeuwenhoek was a pioneer in microbiology. He built his own microscopes and made many of the first observations of the microscopic world, including bacteria, muscle fiber, red blood cells, and sperm cells. Yeah, his own sperm cells. For science. Anyway, van Leeuwenhoek did not believe in spontaneous generation because of his observations of insect reproduction. Obviously, insects came from eggs laid by other insects. The Italian scientist Francesco Ridi showed that no maggots appeared in rotting meat when flies couldn't get to it to lay their eggs in. In 1768, another Italian scientist, Lazzaro Spallanzani, proved that bacteria were present in the air and that they could be killed by boiling. In 1861, an experiment by French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pasteur proved that microorganisms do not spontaneously appear in a flask of sealed off sterilized meat stock and that there has to be a way for them to get into the liquid in order for them to reproduce. And so, by the middle of the 19th century, Aristotle's theory had been completely disproven. Today, scientists all agree that all life comes from earlier life, and that it has become more diverse and complex through evolution by natural selection, a theory famously proposed by Charles Darwin. Darwin himself didn't explicitly speak on what he thought the origin of all life could be. In his book On the Origin of Species, he referred to life having been created, by which he meant he thought it had appeared by some wholly unknown process. In the 1920s, two scientists had an idea that would help shed more light on the origin of life. Russian biochemist Alexander Oparin and English evolutionary biologist John Haldane. Independently from each other, they came up with what later would be called the primordial soup hypothesis. They suggested that the conditions on primordial Earth billions of years ago were very different than they are today. And that seems kind of obvious, but for a very long time humans believed that the Earth and the heavens had been the same always, forever. So that was a pretty groundbreaking idea. Nowadays we know this is true because scientists have been able to study the chemical compositions of rocks dated billions of years old. It's also how we know the age of the Earth, four and a half billion years. Haldane suggested that ultraviolet light from the sun caused chemical reactions in a mixture of water, carbon dioxide, and ammonia. Organic molecules such as sugars and protein components were synthesized. Haldane wrote, These molecules accumulated till the primitive oceans reached the consistency of hot dilute soup. The very first reproducing things may have emerged from this soup. In 1953, one of the most important experiments to help support the soup theory was conducted. Stanley Miller, a graduate student, and his professor Harold Urey demonstrated how organic molecules could have formed from inorganic precursors, under conditions like those proposed by Oparin and Haldane. The now famous Miller-Urey experiment used a mixture of gases, namely methane, ammonia, hydrogen, as well as water vapor, heated the mixture up and ran electricity through it to simulate lightning, since lightning was believed to help the chemical reactions happen. The result, basic organic molecules were formed. Many other experiments showed that it was possible to synthesize organic molecules from mixtures believed to have been present on primordial Earth. So not exactly living things, but it seemed like a really good place to start off of to find out more about the very first life forms. However, studies in 2020 suggested that the conditions on early Earth were very different than previously assumed. That was a bit of a long-winded way of telling you that scientists aren't exactly sure how life on Earth began, except that it probably happened in water. And there's really only a handful of clues to work with. Studying the compositions of ancient rocks and fossils of microorganisms have been found and dated to be at least 3.4 billion years old. So it's definitely proven that life on Earth is at least that old as well, but some scientists believe it's even older, at least 4 billion years. And it may have emerged as soon as that was possible, since basic molecules needed for life seem pretty abundant in the universe. In 2018, NASA scientists found proof of liquid water in 4.5 billion year old meteorites found on Earth, along with complex organic molecules. And in 2019, they found sugar molecules in meteorites. 
Some fringe hypotheses propose life may even travel all over the universe, on comets, asteroids, even rogue planets, and seed itself wherever it goes. So what do these clues tell us about what primordial Earth may have been like, and how life may have developed? The solar system and all the planets formed about 4.6 billion years ago. At first, Earth was molten because of extreme volcanic activity, and regular collisions with asteroids, comets, and even other planets. Eventually, the Earth cooled down enough for a crust to form. There was water vapor present in the atmosphere, at least in part provided by icy comets crashing into our planet, and it started to condense on the surface, forming shallow warm oceans. Seems good for early life to start happening, right? Well, things were cooling down, but not calming down just yet. The interior of the Earth was much hotter than it is today, so there were constant volcanic eruptions, spewing ashes and all sorts of gases into an extremely turbulent atmosphere. The sun was much more active than it is today, and so Earth was under relentless bombardment of ultraviolet rays of a hot young star. As if that wasn't enough, there were still regular impacts of asteroids that hadn't settled into their current place in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, and so had free reign in the inner solar system. Any impact with an object larger than 500 kilometers in diameter would have vaporized the oceans, and so killed any primitive life forms, and it would take many years for the water vapor to settle down and form oceans once again. If that is what the circumstances on primordial Earth were truly like, it's pretty much a miracle that life ever happened. Evidently, it happened anyway, and life, uh, found a way. Uh. <laughs> the jokes are off the charts. Remember I said the oldest fossil on record is 3.2 billion years old? It was found in ancient remains of hydrothermal vents. Places in the oceans where the crust of the Earth is thin and hot magma lies close to the surface and heats the water to boiling temperatures. These vents don't seem very inviting, but even today life thrives in these places. From giant tube worms to microscopic bacteria, scientists think that the very first life forms may have emerged around these hydrothermal vents, deep in the oceans and far away from the harsh light of the sun. Life didn't pop up overnight, so to speak, but it was an evolutionary process, as it's always been. After all, even a single-celled organism like a bacteria is a complex little organic machine, and it couldn't have just appeared out of some primordial soup with just some molecules floating around in it. Life may have started with simple chemical reactions that got more and more complex over time. Strings of molecules would have started to copy themselves, perhaps triggered by external energy sources like radiation or lightning, and there were more than enough loose molecules floating all around to provide food for the copy to be made. A string of molecules that copied itself had a chance of mistakes happening with it. Most of these mistakes made that the copy disintegrated easier, but sometimes improvements were made. Maybe the properties of the molecules changed a bit, so they stuck together better, and so that new property would be passed on to the next copy, and so on and so on. Then maybe certain molecules that were a bit greasy stuck together better than others and made little bubbles. And then, because these bubbles were good for the self-replicating molecules to sit nicely in and be better protected, they lasted longer and could copy themselves better. So you could say that was almost like a primitive cell. And the rest is history. Based on the principle of evolution and the chemistry of life as we know it today, this may be how it actually happened. I'll leave you with one more interesting fact about research into ancient life forms. By studying the DNA of organisms that live today, scientists were able to get an idea of our last universal common ancestor, or LUCA for short. There's no specific fossil evidence for LUCA, but it was probably a single-celled organism that lived in the high temperatures of the water near hydrothermal vents, deep in the ocean, about three and a half billion years ago. From this ancestor, all life as we know it evolved. From sharks to dinosaurs to trilobites to giant dragonflies to every tree and fern and flower, and every human that's ever existed in the short amount of time or species has been around and wondered where it all began. To me and you. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today because I sure did while I was making this video. Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye!